Hello and welcome to Frotch on Fighting with me, Carl Frotch. Hope you're enjoying this channel. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. This episode is brought to you by Cobra Casino. And I'm going to go straight in and introduce you to a former world champion, a good friend of mine, not an old friend or a new friend. He's now a good friend. We've done loads together. George Groves, the saint. How are I'm you, mate? I'm good, Carl. I'm good. So this episode is brought to us by Cobra Casino. That's... Cobra That's one casino. hell of a fit. Did you come up with that? That's very fitting. Yeah. It? It's not your casino, is it? This is what. We've just got to keep people guessing. Right. It's Cobra Casino. That's all we need to I'll know. I'll tell you what landed on our plate. So <laughs> we did an advert for our podcast. Is GG Poker. I thought you might... I was going to come to you with it because really? I know oh, course, you're yeah, the poker yeah, yeah. man. Well, they did. Did they? Listen, I had a poker game with GG yep. Poker. I played... Um, and I, I won the tournament. You probably see it on my Instagram. Right. I didn't win much. I won, a, I won a ticket to a main event. I won an Apple Watch that's not arrived yet. I was going to give that to Rocco for Christmas. We're in, we're in February. <laughs> still not got it. But um, I actually I actually had a really good chat with True Jordy. Yeah. Um, you know, you must yeah. know him. He's also got the pain game. Right. So I, I was sat with him playing poker, and I, I came out on top. There was a few amateurs, but there was also a couple of pros. So, but I had a really good night playing a bit of poker with them. And he's funny, that True Jordy. If you... Um, if you're not familiar with him, which most people are on, on the YouTube world would know who he is. He is actually a really, real good, good character. Good poker player? And he's a big boxing fan as well. Yeah, well, you know, poker, it's one of them games, isn't it? On the day, it's 90% luck. But on the year, it's 90% skill. And people can't get their head around that. When you start playing, you think, how have I just beat this guy? I beat a guy called Jake Cody, who's a top online player. He's good live as well. But if I played him every week for a year, I'd be absolutely bankrupt. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. one of them. It's one of them games. But um, you, you, I've got to ask you, when did you start getting into the promotional world? Because you seem to have done a good job promoting this um, John Fury f feud with the Cobra. What's going on? Well, I don't know. I got caught at the end of the show last week, Buatzi versus uh, Aziz, great card. You was there, Carl was well, wasn't you? So we, we saw each other's, but you know mm -hmm. what it's like. You're trying to leave and um, the video guys, they want to grab hold of you, get your word. And then... You know, they want a little bit of the topical stuff. What is more topical than Cole Frosch's feud with Fury? Not Tyson Fury, John Fury. And then so they said, what do you think? I said, oh, let him fight. Let him fight. I went full Harry, Harry Hill. Fight, you know. <laughs> and um, I said, oh, I want to be part of it. I'll, sort of, I'll ref, maybe. I don't know. But John took that with both hands. And he's... Uh, He's actually stuck it back on you, Carl. He's thrown the gauntlet out to you. He wants you. He wants, he wants your scalp. He says it's got to be a real deal or As something. As we've all seen. Yeah, he's got to make business sense. <laughs> he don't want to fight anybody, even though he's a fighting man. 100 0 his record on the hard road. Right? This guy wants to fight me now because you threw down the gauntlet, apparently. I don't know where the 94,000 at Wembley comes in, but he took it serious, bless him. And then he, he had a go on his social media. But to be fair, George, I've got to thank you. You've... You've done wonders for my channel, Frotch on Fire, in this channel. A lot of people have got interested and uh, jumped on it, but it's a bit of fun, but he seems to have took it a little bit too serious. And I've kind of just said, look, if we do anything, it's for charity. I'm not going to start beating up an old man, and I'm not disrespecting any old man. Men, he's in good shape. He looks all right. Well, is he in good shape? He, he can stand up, can't he? But can he, can he swing punches for two, three minutes? Can he stand in front of the Cobra with 10-ounce gloves on? Actually, you know when you do these exhibitions, is it 16-ounce gloves, 18? Are they... whatever, whatever we want. I wouldn't have thought you guys would have had gloves. I thought you'd have just kept it bare knuckle. Bare yeah. knuckle. Yeah. Well, I was going to. I was going to suggest a, a BKB, a bare knuckle boxing match, just with hand yeah. wraps. But then I thought, what am I even going to start going down the road of trying to entertain a John Fury? Uh, because so it's not happening. So, so you know, you, you, you swallowed it, yeah. Listen, if. If it's got any substance, like he said, if it's got to make business sense, I don't think it does. But if it can make business sense, and like I said on, on, when, I, when I responded, if misfit, misfits, is it misfits? If they want to do something, then I'm not going to turn it down. But I'll be totally honest, and he'll probably, he may or may not see this, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go into a boxing match or any kind of fight in any capacity with John Fury and hit him hard in the face. I just wouldn't want to. I just... I'm a, I'm a lover now, not a fighter. I'm civilised. I don't, I don't do that anymore unless I have to. <laughs> so hopefully you don't try and start on me on the cobbles because I will defend myself. But if we can arrange a little boxing match, it'd be an exhibition, it'd be a move around. And I, I meant it when I said it, it'd be for charity. It, it wouldn't be for any financial gain at all. But um, yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> you did well for me. 
John took it. John might be on you now. Do you think? He might be pissed off with you because um, possibly. I th- Stirring he, the pot, poking the I beer. would have thought he, he, he eyed us both up and thought, I'll go for the easy one. And he called you out any he, mate. So <laughs> yeah. he's very outspoken, interesting. But I, I thought, I mean, much like there's a cue to fight you, Cole, there's, there's a cue to fight John as well. And I think he, Joey Egan's were calling him out lately. I thought that was a good fight. But then he went, he went a bit quiet. Yeah. Yeah. So it might be a tournament, Carl. I'm talking about tournament format. You know, you're all in there. <laughs> Six... Hey, mate, if there's a tournament, if there's a tournament, you're yeah. involved. You're in there as well. <laughs> I'm dragging you in right. with me. You started, you started it. But um, anyway, me and you are getting together. So before we talk boxing, let's talk about the 10th anniversary George Crowe's Boxing Club gig. You've obviously got your own podcast. If people haven't seen it or listened to it, they want to get on there, the George Groves Boxing Club. It's a unique club. And if you want to become a member, you've just got to get on there and listen to the content. And if you're lucky enough, like me, you'll get invited on. But we're actually doing a live show, yeah. aren't we? It, with an audience. I'll let you, I'll let you tell everyone. Well, Cole, on. thank you for the intro. Yes, we uh, at the GGBC, the George Groves Boxing Club, uh, we're putting on our first live event. So that is going to happen on May the 22nd. And... With the timing of it, with it being almost 10 years to the day since me and you came and had a little tussle, a little push and pull, a little uh, 80,000 at Wembley, I thought you were the perfect guest to entice our sort of our listeners in and our club members and grow the show, of course. I thought no one does it quite as well as Cole. So you've kindly agreed to come down and accept the challenge. So I'm not sure what we're billing it yet. We've come up with three Pete or Revenge, which, you know... Could do bit, could be better. You know, ten years in the making. A couple have said it could just be Frotch versus Groves, which three, which now people are thinking we're going to have to have a fight. But um, that's definitely not on the cards, you know. But uh, we're going to have a great night, Carl. So I'm really looking forward to it. tickets are on sale now. Yeah. So I think I, f- I don't think there's a lot left. I'm looking forward but to it. We're going to come down and yeah, we chew the breeze. We, we've parked all that. All that, all that nonsense in Manchester. Now we're at the, the, you know, the big, the big night, the historic night, Wembley. Your night, Cole. Your big night. So, um, yeah. My, well, there was, there was both my, my nights, to be fair, weren't there? <laughs> when we look at, when we look at, the, we look at the records, we look at the history, and there's a W next to my yeah. name. But I know yeah, what you yeah, mean. Yeah. Like you had, you had a good night. You had, you had a good start to the night, didn't you? And a bad finish. Oh, oh right, that one. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, one. yeah, yeah. So I mean, some people call it one-one. Yeah. You're right. On box rec, it's not quite one-one, but. Who calls who calls it one one? I've never heard that. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> who, who said that? <laughs> one, who one, said it was one one? one? This is the decider. But you know, so uh, it's, it's 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 controversy after controversy. Carl, it's what boxing's fueled by. We're going to put it all on the line. Essentially, winner takes all. Uh, May twenty second. All I know is, all I know is, listen, we've got, we've got a good talking point. Me and you together, I think the comments that we get from, from the show we do, the verdict on TalkSport, the bits we've done on Sky together, people do love our sort of dynamic interaction, if you like. We're both quite a bit dry, sense of humour, and um, we're both a bit mus- misunderstood. But now we've got a bit more social media presence. You've got your podcast, and I've got my YouTube channel. Um, the George Groves Boxing Club and obviously Frotch on Fighting, which we're on now, we're starting to cross over to a new audience and a, a bit of a younger demographics watching. I, I, I'm quite enjoying it. But so we've got a lot to say, a lot to talk about, as as we we never we never fall short of of subjects to roll onto. But I just feel on this night when me and you meet up, you've got a little trick up your sleeve because last time I came on your podcast, you started talking shit about Jake Paul, and I, I was like, I was th- in the thick of his nonsense at the time. And then you hit me with him and some other matchups, some some genuine matchups. Then you hit Jake Paul. You slipped him in the trick, and I bit terribly. Um, so you've definitely got something in the closet. You hide it. There's something going to spring out. Either someone's going to pop off on stage. You're going to talk about a subject, or you're going to do something. So I'm, I'm ready for you. Anyway, I'm just I'm just warning you that yeah, I'm ready. Big, and Big Lee's coming with me as well. Yeah, my big, big brother, brother Lee's so coming. He's got my back. Uh, it, I'm going to try and get him on my team for that night. No, there's going to be loads of fun. There's loads, loads of tricks up the sleeve, Carl. I'm not even sure how it's going to find it. it, might, it there'll be a yeah. bit of state of play, I'm sure. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And it's when May... May, May 22nd. May 20... 22nd, 22nd of May. You can get your tickets. We'll put a link in for the tickets. We'll push this on um, socials anyway. So if you can, get down. Come and listen to me and George. We'll have a good night. It'll be a good bit of fun. And um, I'm looking forward to it. And I hope you are, I George. Because I'll have a little trick on my sleeve as well. For <laughs> I you. hope so. So let's, um, let's, let's move on with our conversation anyway. So let's start with Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. Obviously, big news 
Tyson Fury's pulled out with this, uh, this cut that is genuine. Sometimes it's over his right eye, sometimes it's over his left eye. That's, I'm assuming, it's got to be the mirror image on the screen. Because a lot of people are talking about that, but it doesn't take a genius to work out that it's just a mirror image on the, on the selfie mode. So he's definitely cut. He's definitely been stitched up and it's on the mend. Um, what do you think to the date? Is that, is that a little bit too soon? When it, is it May, May 18th? Yeah, May 18th. So it didn't, okay. they didn't want to clash with our event card. They didn't, didn't want to clash they didn't with our event We were going out May yeah, 22nd, the they're joke. going out the week before. I was thinking I mean, that. we might end up discussing yeah, that yeah. fight if it happens. But you made a good point straight after the announcement. And you said it makes sense business-wise for them to say oh, all this problems. But don't worry. Here we go. Here's the new deal. Here's the new date. And there's... Ten million pounds fine on the line for anyone who pulls out. So, yeah. you know, I'm still at the stage of like, oh, I'll believe it when I see it. You know, when they've got to get in the ring before it, I believe is truly going to happen. It's always felt like it's it just it was a bit doomed. And then you know, as I say, when when Fury when when the news broke that Fury was cut and the fight was off, there was that element of oh well, yeah, well, not, not, I'm not surprised. Obviously, he's cut. There's a, there's a picture of the cut. But uh, you're still like, it's not devastation because there was a part of me that thought this fight wasn't going to happen for, for one reason or another. Um, but an injury yeah, yeah. scuppered it, you know, was it weeks, two weeks out? I mean, if it, was a bad, if it was a bad back or a bad arm or something, you'd be like, hang on a minute, this is definitely a mm. setup. But he is cut. But now I'm hearing that the cut's really clean and it's been done with a scalpel. But I don't think you'd go to that length. Or would you? Would you open yourself up and say, I need another... If he needed another month or six weeks or eight weeks, would it be worth cutting his eye open? Absolutely. And stitching it up? I Absolutely, think Absolutely, Carl. You well, I'm not so, saying yeah. he's done it, but you're saying, is it is it an option? Of course it is. You know, there's so much pressure on the line, but it's it's the one that you can't get out of because a cut, you know, a cut's a cut, you can't dispute it as you can with a bad back or anything else. People don't, there's sympathy with a cut. People don't expect you to fight with a cut. You can say, oh, I've hurt my hand. You know, your hand could be smashed to smithereens, but people are like, we don't care. Some, some, some guys have had a fight with a bad toe and they've got stick for it after. You're better off having a cut. But, you know, uh, you're, only, you're only playing into the, the narrative and the, sort of the, it's fun, it's fun if you're not part of it and it must be, you know, infuriating if you're part of it that people think, well, yeah, you just cut yourself to get out of this fight. But yeah. I always sit there, Carl, you might sit there, and then I don't watch it, but people who watch it, you know, you, you, your mum or your nan or your mother in law, whatever, they talk, they watch like um, Celebrity Jungle and they go, I wouldn't eat that thing for a million pounds. I was thinking, well, you probably would. <laughs> and, you know, the yeah. amount of things you go through as a fighter to get fit for the fight um, is beyond comprehension for a lot of people, you know, in terms of the, the sacrifice you have to make, the training you go through, the, the, the diet, the pressure, the sparring, the fight. And then the fact that if it wasn't right and the the alien idea of a cut for a lot of people were panicking, but really it's like, eh, you know, if it, if, if it, if it helped, if it, if it did, if it did the job, it did the job. So, but that, but yeah. that, but, what do you make of Usyk not fighting now? I think Usyk, that's terrible news for him, Carl, isn't it? Because like he's out the ring again. He's done yeah, his camp. I think it'd be, be good to keep busy. He's out the camp, you know, and, and he must be... Yeah. How does he train for May properly thinking this fight ain't happening in May? It's going to pull out again. So yeah. that's a nightmare for him. That... Yeah. He missed, missed the birth of his daughter. He flew back to meet her, obviously. Oh, last did week, he? I, think I he didn't did. know that. Whilst training. Wow. Yeah. Oh, did you not? You're not been keeping in. You're not been keeping in tune with Froch on fighting. If you don't know that, I, I did, you, did that you break that news? Channel. Oh shit! Okay, <laughs> so you, he's missed the. Are you, how many... plastic, are you a plastic Froch on fighting many... fan? Are you not? If you not hit the notification and the subscription button, what's no, going I have, on? I have. I have. I have. I make sure I listen to enough that it, you know, gives you that gives you that like and view. How many kids has he got now? You know what? I've got to be honest. I ain't got a clue. But he's just had a newborn baby girl, and uh, he missed that. Training, which which we do. I, I, be, I nearly missed the birth of Natalia. Um, I went down the M1 um, after a sparring session before the Kessler fight. Took a, took a wrong turn um, or something. I didn't have oh. any good. I, I didn't have any good sparring for that fight because my old mate George Groves was out there helping Kessler for that one. So softened him up, mate. Actually, actually no, that was actually yeah, it was that one. Actually, it was that one. But um, Usyk, yeah, he's not fighting. It's a bit out of order. Is um, as in he's not fighting on. 
next week, whatever it was, May, um, February 17th. And now Tyson Fury is talking about not only is he not retiring because of this court, he's going to fight five more mm. times. Gonna, he might fight Usyk twice because there's a rematch clause. If he fights AJ eventually, there'll be a potentially a rematch clause in that, but he's on about bashing him up that bad. He won't want the rematch. And um, yeah, he's also f- about talking about a, an Ngannou rematch, which as people have got a bit of an appetite for the Ngannou rematch, but let's see what happens with AJ and Ngannou first. But do you, are you buying into that narrative that Tyson Fury's got another four, potentially five fights left in him? Because I'm not so sure. Yeah, about I, don't, that. I don't think so. Uh, you know, you have to pick up the frequency of, of which he's boxing. Um, you'd imagine, yeah, it's, it's obviously signed in for two fights with Usyk already, and that that will definitely happen. But I, I can't see him fighting past that. Um, people always cry out for the Joshua fight, but if that's in another two years' time, um, is that yeah. you know where's Joshua at, at that stage? And then they've got to fight yeah. twice, and then fighting Garnu. <laughs> it's it's a lot. It's a lot, but it's yeah. the right thing for him to say right now to get people off his back in terms of questioning his. He's his going retirement. nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, what do you think, Carl? Do you think he's got five fights in him? No, I don't, I'm not sure he fights again. But I just think that the amount of money that's on the line for this fight with with Usyk and with it being a, an undisputed heavyweight title fight, and the Saudis have ploughed a lot of money into it. I didn't think they was going to let him back in England, to be honest. I didn't think they was going to let him fly home. Right, you're stuck in Saudi now for another three months. You're going nowhere, but obviously they can't hold him captive. So he's back in England. I believe he's back in England anyway. So he'll have a couple of weeks and he'll be he'll be straight back on it and back in sparring. I think he'll fight Usyk and he'll be, he'll be in the best shape he possibly can be. Similar to when I rematched you. I think he knows he's at the end of his career. He knows it's difficult for him to get down to his optimum fight weight. He's probably not enjoying it as much as he did. After watching him on the Netflix series... I think there's a few demons in there and he's, he's a bit you know, mentally up and down. He's happy, then he's unhappy. I don't want to stigmatise him or characterise him under a certain umbrella or give it a, give it a medical term. And there's a, there's a few medical terms that you could, you could put on Tyson Fury. But I just think he's a guy that's not, he's not that happy. Um, he's certainly not happy all the time. And watching him on Netflix in his mood swings, sometimes it's, it's awkward and horrible to watch. And I just think... I think he'll retire and he, he won't box anymore because he won't, he won't be able to get through the camp and he won't, he won't physically be able to do it. But I don't think he'll want to retire. I think he'll, be, I think he'll have mm. to. I don't think he wants to ever retire from boxing. Boxing's his life. And if he doesn't box, I don't know what he's going to do to keep his, um, his mind happy and keep himself active. He loves being in the limelight, doesn't he? He loves the fame. He, loves, he talks well. He's a character. I've got nothing against Fury. I'm, when, I, when I talk about him, like, like his dad, John Fury, says, um, keep... Keep his name, keep his name out of my mouth, and all that rubbish and nonsense. Like I'm not allowed to have an opinion on Tyson Fury. I've got nothing against him. I just tell the truth. That's what we do here on Frotch on Fine. I tell the truth, and a lot of the times I say a lot of things what people are actually thinking, but they don't want to say it because they haven't got the knackers. They haven't got the John Fury knackers, have they? So they didn't say it, and they're worried. I'm not worried about that. I just speak freely to a point, and. Um, Unfortunately, not everybody enjoys the truth today. It gets people's backs up. And that's what's happened with John Fury. I don't think Tyson Fury will fight on again after Usyk. I think he fights Usyk. Um, and I think it'll be the best last of him. It'll be his possible, best possible shape he'll be in. And I think that'll be the end of him. Um, win or lose. I can't see him fighting again. But if he does lose, and it's, it's a loss that's close, or it's a loss that he's not happy with, or something, there's always circumstances, isn't there? In other news, in other news, moving swiftly on from that, Javante Davis, Conor Ben, what do you make of that? Whether I didn't, I haven't seen the last Conor Ben fight. I know uh, he won, he won convincingly on points, and I think he weighed in a couple of pounds over the welterweight limit. So he's thinking about continuing being a welterweight. That you know, that that's what you assume. Um, Davis, light lightweight, like, so he's got yeah, you say a couple of divisions to go up, but um, he's up for it. Avis, 100%. He's up for it. And they seem like two characters who don't actually shy away from a fight. You know, Conor Ben doesn't want to concede uh, and admit that, you know, he, whatever he's got to admit to to get a British Boxing Board Control license. So he's probably going to have to carry on fighting in the States. The Eubank fight just seems like it's not going to happen. As much as, like, Eddie Hearn was desperate for it, you know, in a post-fight interview and stuff like this. But... He's calling out some other stars. And if you're Conor Ben, you'd probably rather fight a Javante Davis than, you know, a Crawford or someone who's, you know, a bigger guy who's doing... I do you think he gets on against Davis? Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I wouldn't write. I wouldn't go against against Davis. Ben, Ben is still is the best yet to come. You know, is there still so much more to see? Obviously, naturally bigger, but he doesn't have a comprehensive boxing. Um, I think out of all of them, though, Davis is because he's smaller. He's probably the best choice. Like, interesting listening to Oscar De La Hoya um, a couple of days ago. Did an interview and he said, "Well, there's weight divisions in the sport for a reason." He wasn't saying that Conor Ben beats Davis, but he was saying, "Listen." Kind of pick on someone your own size. He's a 145 pound mm. fighter, um, and obviously Conor Ben's been up to 160. And it's just what's going on. Yeah, you're calling out somebody two divisions below than you just for the name. You're just calling out all the big names in the Conor Ben. It's making noise against all, pulling out all big names out of the bag. And you do wonder that he's still got to learn. He's still got to learn his craft. He's, he's got to build and. He's got to become, I know he's just done 12 rounds, but he's done 12 rounds against a punch bag. You've got to be in there against somebody who's actually not just trying to win, but has also got the ability and the capabilities and the punching power to try and cause some kind of problems, give you some kind of adversity during the fight. Don't have it all your own way. And he's not always had it his own way, Conor Ben. But I just feel like you can't jump from where he is at the minute and the big gap he's had out of the sport straight up to the elite level professionals. But calling them out, Keeps his name in the highlights. He's, he's had his name massively pushed and he's become really popular for all the wrong reasons um, recently. I think he, he needs to get in front of the board of control, um, hopefully get his licence back, and then he's back on, as Ricky Gervais would say, he's at the bottom of a ladder he wants to climb rather than being almost at the top of one that he doesn't. Because if he jumps straight in there with some of them big, big guns, I think he's going to struggle bad. I'm not saying he's got no chance against Davis, but Crawford, Haney... You know, some of the some of the fighters have been pulling out the bag. I, I just think stay well clear of that. If I'm managing him, I'm like, no, don't even mm. go there. But um, that's that's my opinion, yeah. mate. And that's mm. what you're here for, mate. Love it or like it, or love it or loathe love it. it. Love you it or like it. That's it, the option. If you tune into Frost, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you're right. I, I get I get the point with with Conor Ben that he calls out big names. Like that's great. You want all your you want all fighters to sort of do that. He's got a big name, but what he really needs is he needs, you know, a couple of world title fights first before going in with these sort of, you know, uber talents like Haney. Haney might be one to remember, you know, Crawford's definitely going to be one to remember. Um, these are these are these are these are experienced guys as well who have been at the top for quite a while now and been successful. Yeah. So, yeah, you know. Whether he just calls out these names, but then fights more gatekeepers to the sort of division, you know that that could be the way to go. But yeah. if anything, he just needs to be active, Cole, doesn't he? You know, he had, he had he's had two fights now since since the controversy, but they were like five and a half months apart. You know, if you're him, if you can, just keep busy, even if it's in the states. Just get bank yeah. another two, three fights this year, maybe even more, and then see what. Yeah. Where the land lies. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So we've got Joshua Ngannou, March eighth, moving swiftly on. March 8th, Joshua Ngarno. Um First of all, what do you make of that one? Do you expect Joshua to get the job done? Yeah, yeah, he's got to win comfortably. Um, yeah. It makes sense. What, points? Do you think he'll stop him? Well, I don't know about that in Garner. I don't know how, how good a chin he's got. He looks rock solid and he looks like quite a good athlete. He went in the 10 rounds with Fury. It's tough, doesn't um, it? And the 10 rounds, I thought he was going to gas. I thought he was definitely going to gas after a couple of rounds. Big dude, never boxed this distance before. But whether he got the second wind when he drops Fury and that got him through, we might not see that this time round. What I don't want to see is like a, a cautious Joshua who just sort of tries to sort of no, just fit, fiddle his I way agree. to a decision because there's a lot on the line. Well, and Garner might not allow that, and Garner might end up having to press him because I think AJ could probably outbox him quite easily behind his behind his jab and move. And bring him on, but if Ngannou gets a bit frustrated, he might roll inside and start doing them. He did a little flying punch, didn't he? Like an MMA punch. Oh, did he? Yeah. Last one that, that I think just whizzed past the chin of Fury. So he might use his size and strength and back AJ up, put him under pressure, which would then force AJ to throw punches and fight back and meet him as he comes. Um, if he's taking advice correctly out the corner, he should stand and stand his ground and meet Ngannou. So it could be a good fight. I expect him to get the job done. Do you think he beats him? Do you think you, we just said that? Yeah, he's got to beat him. I think AJ beats him, him. Like him, him or beats him on points. Um, you know, you watch the last fight uh, against uh, Valin where he sort of he looked like a hard man. Do you know what I mean? Dictated from the front, pressed on the front foot, authority with a jab, yeah. let let the right hand go. You know, Joshua can punch very well. Like technically, his punching is is very good. At each single shot, and I just thought at times he's just missed that bit of flow in between the punches, and that's where he's sort of 
come short. And the little guys like Andy Ruiz, who can box, but is conceding a lot of natural yeah. size, should never win a heavyweight world title, does because he can box a bit and he's got a bit of flow. And Garn, who's got no natural rhythm, has well. he? Because he's never boxed. Do you know what I mean? In fact, and if anything, his rhythm is yeah. out of whack because he spent so long doing cage fighting. So that's, you know, a, a challenge for any sort of boxer in the heavyweight division who just can't fight anyone who isn't stereotypical, hands up, normal. Like, what you get is what you see. Yeah. So there could be... It could be drama. I would. It'd be great for the viewer to see some drama. But I think Joshua should really just step to him, land his jab, big size of him, and then, yeah, land some big shots and get rid of him. I think that makes a massive statement. If you clips AJ though, if you clips him, it could, could. get exciting. If you clips AJ and hurts him, gets him a little, gives him a little wobble on the leg, little leg shake. Yeah. Um, your leg shook a little bit, didn't it? You give it a little wobble before the stoppage in the first fight. I don't want to go on about that first fight, but you was caught and hurt, and then I put it on you. And every time you show the clip of the stoppage, you conveniently leave out that right hand that hit you when you was holding Cole. on and grabbing it. It was only minutes. It was only minutes ago. You, think think ago you were telling oh. me you just you just come on here and tell the truth. <laughs> That's what frustrating fighting was telling the truth. You're, you're are you, discrediting are you, yourself. Are you question, you're still you're discrediting it, yourself you? here. We need to save this for the podcast, don't we? We need to save it for the George Groves Boxing Club live event yeah, well, on May 18th. That's what we need to do. Hang on, it's not May 18th. Let's May, get it right. May, May 22nd. 22nd. <laughs> there we go. So, talking back about AJ and Ngannou, do you think the winner um, deserves the shot at the winner of um, Tyson Fury Usyk? Because that's what's being touted. Actually, thinking about it, there's probably somebody else who maybe, I don't know, Gilles Zhang. I mean, he's, he's been around. He's had a couple of good wins. And I feel like somebody else deserves it. I can understand that AJ, obviously, is the bigger name and is the bigger draw. And the, the Saudis have kind of lost the plot mm. with him because they're chucking money away, aren't they, really? At, that, at AJ and heavyweight boxing, literally just ploughing an absurd amount of money into it. And obviously, they're going to want the AJ fight against the winner of Usyk and... Um, and Fury, but do you think he deserves it? Yeah, well, I mean, you've got, yeah, you've got, you've got Hergovic, who's a mandatory, so you'd imagine at some point, once the Usyk Fury stuff is done and dusted, that someone's getting stripped if it ain't him. Uh, Gilles Zhang, he's in the mix now, isn't he? And, but I don't think he's a mandatory, but he might be close to it by the time, he might have had a fight or two in the meantime. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about AJ. I'm thinking about AJ. Mm. Sorry to stop you there. People always say, Froch, let him talk, for fuck's sake. Well, I'm letting you talk, but I just want to say... Jermaine, um, I was going to say Benjamin Franklin then, but is that a hundred dollar note? Jermaine, Jermaine Franklin. Um, who else is it for? Helenius. Who else was it? Helenius Franklin. Come on, keep Roosevelt, up. Roosevelt. Um, Otto Valin. So look at look at look at his fights. Look who he's boxed since since kind of coming back after getting getting whooped twice. Because he did get whooped twice by Usyk, and he? he got bashed up bad, nearly stopped. Let's be honest. Um, does, does he now deserve a shot at the undisputed heavyweight title fight after beating Francis Ngannou? Mm. If indeed he don't walk into one and get put, well, yeah, I suppose ice. not. I don't. I wouldn't. You wouldn't say that he's fought him, fought his way into that shot for beating Ngannou. But if Fury wins, beats Usyk, and he's got all the belts, and Joshua wins and wins well. That fight's going to happen, isn't it? And it'll be that will be the biggest fight in history. You'd rather see that one, wouldn't you? You'd rather see that one than anybody else. But is it fair? It's probably not. No, right, no, no, no. You know, if if it. if Joshua wins and Usyk wins, I still would rather see Joshua Fury next because I don't want to see Joshua uh, Usyk three. You know, yeah, are we going to find out anything different? Yeah. And then, uh, but but Fury no. Fury versus Joshua. You know, that's a great fight. I mean, it's going to happen in Saudi, so that's a disappointment. It won't be in the UK, but that's a great fight. What's disappointing about it? Well, that? you know, you know you as well go, as we know, don't we, Joe? The difference it makes in having your, your fight in the UK, you know, just the chance for people to go. And, you know, we, we made sure there was cheap seats in the back, so it was accessible for everyone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's, it makes for, you know, pe- people talk about it. People are going to talk about it much more. Well, me and you was me and you was talking about the um, well, me and you was out for the rematch with um, AJ Ruiz for the um, for the Sky broadcast. Um, and what uh, I know, I know what the answer is, but you didn't think much of the atmosphere, did you? Neither do I. No. The atmosphere in Saudi, 
it's not having it, is it? Let's yeah, be honest. No, yeah. And I've had a few arguments with people, including a guy called Gareth A. Davis, who seems to dig his heels in and say, you're talking nonsense. The atmosphere is brilliant. And I said, well, you can hear a door shut in the back of the arena <laughs> on the night when the big action's on. So you can't tell me the atmosphere is, is yeah. good. You know yeah, I mean, I mean so, he's either not been what? to any big shows lately in the UK and forgotten, or he's just sucked into the bubble, Carl. Do you know what I mean? So if you're out there and you see Ronaldo and you're very excited by that, or you see Eminem, or you yeah. see Evander Holyfield, yeah. they're, they're lots. You as the person there, and you might have, and Gareth has got access to them to a certain degree through his job with Talksport. Yeah. That's amazing for him, but it doesn't transpire on the telly for me. Um, and maybe one day it will, yeah. but it doesn't transpire. Like, this doesn't have the same excitement watching it from home. Yeah. And then being there, yeah, you know, it wasn't... Who knows what the missing link is, what the missing sort of ingredient is, but, yeah, it, it, it doesn't. It just, it just doesn't. I'll tell you what the missing ingredient is. British fans, British fans that know the fighters, that, that actually want somebody to win and want somebody to lose and want to see a knockout against, against um, the Saudi population that turn up in, you know, I'm not... It's not even... It's not even empty. It's, there's empty seats, sorry, should I say. It's not even full. But they're watching boxing and they don't really know the guys in the ring. They're not really bothered who wins or loses. They're not emotionally and passionately attached to the fight. Where When you put a fight on a Wembley Stadium in front of 80,000 fans against me and you, for example, let's talk about me and you for a minute. People wanted to see you get ironed out, didn't they? They turned up to watch you get knocked out. That's what they wanted. They want many there booing me. Or is that no? There was booing me, wasn't there? Let's be honest. There was booing both of us. We was equally, <laughs> equally as hated by the equal amount of people on that night. Because I remember you getting booed in, and then I got booed in. I thought, what's going on? Who's, who's, who's got the who's got the fans back in here on this one? And, and no one seemed to have it. But what I'm saying is, the atmosphere was awesome at both fights. And you don't get an O2 anymore. You don't get a fight at the O2. You don't get a big fight at the MEN in Manchester. You certainly any fights worth watching now. Any big fights in the heavyweight division. You're not going to get a Wembley Stadium, are you? And it's a shame from that point of view, but it's an even bigger shame when you're actually out inside, you're watching the fight and the atmosphere. The atmosphere is crap, let's be honest. Gareth A. Davis talks shit. I'm disappointed with him. I'm going on a tangent, man. But no, thanks a lot, George. Listen, we've had a good chat about boxing. But um, it's been great to have you on. Looking forward to the podcast. I'll see you before then, no doubt. But um, yeah, appreciate Lovely, it, mate. It's been, it's been fun. Thanks for your time. You're going to get the kids from school and I'll... Um, I'll get the dinner Lovely. on for the missus. She's done the school well run there, so I'll uh, I'll get the dinner on. But no, thank you, and we'll um, we'll catch up again soon, Take George boy. Nice one, mate. So thanks a lot to my old mate George Groves. That was um, Frosty on fighting with George Groves. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you next time.